Hello and welcome everyone to Synapser. So far in our previous lectures, we had discussed about the formation of various cellular components as well as the formation of hemoglobin. Now in today's lecture, we'll be discussing about the fate of RBC or the destruction of the RBC. You should know that the normal lifespan of RBC is not more than 120 days. So when the RBCs become old, the membrane becomes fragile. And as they pass through the sinusoidal capillaries within the reticular endothelial system, for example, spleen. So when they travel through the reticular endothelial uh, system, they get stuck within the sinusoidal capillaries. And there, within the reticular endothelial system, we have macrophages or the monocytes, various phagocytic cells. These phagocytic cells will engulf this old RBC or the damaged RBC by the process of phagocytosis. So by the process of phagocytosis, the RBC, the old RBCs will be engulfed and it will be broken down, the RBCs will be broken down into its component parts. It mostly contains hemoglobin because it, uh, the most of the cellular components are absent within the RBC, therefore it will release hemoglobin. Now this hemoglobin will be broken down into its two parts, one is globin, another one is heme. Now this globin is obviously a protein or the polypeptide chain, therefore it will be broken down into amino acids by various proteases. Now the another component of this hemoglobin is the heme. The heme con uh, consists of the iron and the porphyrin. This iron will be released and the remaining part of the heme will be oxidized by the heme oxidase into bilevorden. And this heme oxidase is present within the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. That's an important question. Now this bilevorden will be reduced by the bilevorden reductase, which is a cytoplasmic enzyme, into the bilirubin. Okay, so bile, first we have the heme, heme is converting to the bilevorden by the heme oxidase and then this bilevorden is converted to the bilirubin by the bilirubin reductase. Now this bilirubin is a hydrophobic molecule. That means it cannot travel within the fluid medium. It's also unconjugated. Now what do I mean by conjugated or unconjugated? That I will tell you in the later part of the lecture. But for now you should know that this bilirubin is hydrophobic or unconjugated. Now all the three uh, components that is amino acid, iron and the bilirubin will be released into the blood. Now the amino acids within the blood will be transported to various parts of the body and there they will be utilized for the protein synthesis. Then we have the iron. Now there is an important thing that is iron is transported by transferrin in the ferric form. So what we have is within the hemoglobin we have iron in ferrous form. However within the blood we have iron in its ferric form, okay? So it's transported within the blood in its ferric form and that's an important thing. So within the blood, this iron will be transported in the Fe3 form by the protein that is transferrin. Now the another component that's the bilirubin will be attached to the albumin because it cannot travel through the blood on its own. So it's attached to a protein that is albumin and it forms an important complex that is bilirubin albumin complex. Now this complex will reach the labor. And before it enters into the liver, the albumin will be released back into the blood circulation. And this bilirubin will enter into the hepatocytes or the liver by an important protein that's organic anion transport protein. So it will enter into the hepatocytes by the organic anion transport protein. Now this bilirubin, as it enters into the hepatocytes, it will attach to the glutathione. Now why it attached to the glutathione? There's an important thing that this glutathione actually prevents its reflex back into the blood. Otherwise what will happen is this bilirubin can be transported back into the blood. However, as it attached to the glutathione, therefore it cannot trans be transported back into the blood. Now this uh, bilirubin which is attached to the glutathione will attach to the glucuronic acid. Now this is an important process and this process is known as conjugation. Now this glucuronic acid will not get attached to the bilirubin on its own. It's actually transported to bilirubin by an important enzyme that is UDP glucuronosyl transferase. Now this UDP glucuronosyl transferase is actually a microsomal transport protein which helps in the transfer of glucuronic acid groups to the hydrophobic molecules like bilirubin. So it's a transfer protein that transports glucuronic acid to the hydrophobic molecules like bilirubin. And this process is known as conjugation. So this is the process of conjugation. And after this, we have a bilirubin diglucuronide or diglucuronic acid complex. And this is actually hydrophilic. 
Therefore, from now onwards, it can travel into the fluid medium on its own. So we have a hydrophobic molecule of bilirubin dichloronide, and this is also conjugated now because the process of conjugation has taken place. Now, this bilirubin dichloronide will be transported into the canaliculi by an important protein that is multi-drug resistant associated protein 2. So it's MRP2. It will be transported into the canaliculi by the MRP2 protein. And then obviously this bile canaliculi, within the bile canaliculi, it will be transported along with the bile into the duodenum. There's an, also an important thing that if this MRP2 is blocked, then what will happen is this bilobin digluchronide will be transported into the plasma via the MRP3. Okay, so MRP2 transports bilobin digluchronide into the bile canaliculi. However, MRP3 transports bilirubin digluchronide into the plasma and obviously from the plasma it will reach the kidneys for filtration and then it can be released in the form of the urine. Now, this bile uh, will, trans uh, will be released into the duodenum and from the duodenum it will reach the large intestine. Now what happens with the large intestine? There are various bacteria which actually convert this bilirubin digluchronide into the uromyelinogen. Okay, so bacteria enzymes convert uh, bilirubin digluchronide into urobilinogen. And this urobilinogen can have two fates. One is, it can actually be redu reduced to the stercobilin. It can be reduced to a molecule of stercobilin. And this stercobilin is yellowish brown in color. And this stercobilin is responsible for the characteristic yellow color of feces. And that's an important question. The color of feces is yellow because of stercobilin. The another fate of urobilinogen is that it can be absorbed by the hepa uh, sorry by the enterocytes, and after absorption, it will obviously enter into the portal vein because from the enterocytes we have portal veins. So it will enter into the portal veins, and then via the plasma, it will reach to the kidneys. And within the kidneys, this urobilinogen will be reduced into another form that is urobilin. And this urobilin is also yellow, but it's pale yellow. Therefore, we'll have a yellowish urine. So what, uh, we have two questions. One is, the characteristic color of feces is yellow. Why? Because of the presence of stercobilin. However, the color of urine is yellow because of urobilin. So these are two important questions. And now you should know that the daily production of uh, bilirubin is 300 milligram per day. It's actually 250 to 350, but on an average it's 300 milligram per day. And it's 80% is uh, formed from the hemoglobin. However, 20% is formed from other non, uh, sorry, heme containing proteins. So from other heme containing proteins, we have 20% of production. Now the normal serum level of uh, bilirubin is 0 0.3 milligram per deciliter, or if we convert it into the millimoles, micromoles, sorry, it will be five to 18 micromoles per liter. So <laughs> this was everything regarding the destruction of RBC. Now this topic is very important because this topic forms the basis of uh, the classification of genres, which we'll be discussing in the further lectures. So for now, you should remember this because uh, we'll be utilizing this topic in our next topic, that's the classification of genres. So guys, please subscribe to my channel and do not forget to press the bell icon so that whenever I upload new videos, you'll get notified. Thank you everyone and have a nice day.